so we, uh, hopefully the ratings, uh, we, we helped their calls. Uh, what a ball game, man. Just an unbelievable game. Uh, you know, I, I knew all week, talked all week about NC State, knew they would fight with everything that they had. You got two teams that are battling for uh, first place in the division. And uh, so we knew it was going to be a championship effort uh, for sure. And uh, it was the same from our guys. Our guys, you know, they played with, with tremendous effort. Uh, we just, you know, had a lot of a lot of mistakes. You know, you, you, you're lucky to win. I mean, four turnovers, um, three in the red zone, two on the goal line uh, is, is really hard to overcome. But uh, our guys continue to fight. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, they, they found a way to win another close one. And, um uh, I think Tim told me uh, a minute ago, we, our last 17 games that we've been in over the past however many years that have come down to a touchdown or less, we're 15 and two in those games. So there's something to be said for finding a way to win. There's there's something to be said for knowing how to win. And uh, just proud of our guys, because uh, again, I mean, <laughs> I, I, in the last two games here, and nine turnovers against two teams, two good teams, and you still win. Uh, is uh, not necessarily the recipe you want to uh, have to overcome, but but they did. And uh, man, I'm just really proud of them for their fight. But, uh, certainly uh, disappointed in the turnovers that we had uh, because I mean it just it just makes you want makes you makes you pull your hair out uh, really. Uh, so, but the guys are fighting, giving great effort, and uh, you know it was a big hit on Gallman in the red zone. You know, Mike's fighting, trying to get him extra effort and get the ball out. Uh, and Tyshawn uh, going in to score. And then uh, <clears throat> they had a nice coverage on, on uh, coming out of the third quarter. They had a little, little trap corner and, uh, you know, kind of fooled us there. And they, the kid made a great play for points. So we got three opportunities where you get no points and then you get their turnovers pick six. Uh, and our guys just keep playing. I mean, they just kept playing, kept battling. And uh, really proud, but that's what we talk about. We we say Clemson football is 60 minutes, or as long as it takes to finish. That's what we that's what we talk about. And uh, so, just proud of our guys for for finding a way to win the game uh, when they had to have it offensively. You know, 495 yards with four turnovers um, is incredible. Uh, again, three in the red zone, two on the goal line, and then a bad snap in overtime. You know, we're on the ball on the one. I guess we just felt like we needed to back it up to the 10 uh, just to. Just to kind of keep the rhythm of the day going. Um, so, but, you know, again, they just kept playing and uh, proud of them. Uh, it was a record day for Deshaun, 39 completions, and a lot of heart by him. Uh, I thought he had a great rhythm all day. I missed one deep ball early uh, to uh, Dion. He probably should have hit. And then, obviously, the interception, they, they, just, they just they got us. They fooled us on that. Good play by them. Uh, but other than that, I thought he was uh, made some nice plays, and, and we caught we threw and caught the ball well. Uh, Mike Williams, a record 12 catches for him. Uh, Renfro, you know, when Renfro comes back, and, and uh, man, he had I think six big catches. Uh, but good to get him back in, in the rhythm out there. Uh, and Ray Ray had some nice plays. Uh, Leggett, what a play he had down there on the goal line. Wow, what a just a competitive. You know, you want it more than the opponent type of a catch. Uh, great play by him. And, uh, you know, C.J. Fuller came in and, and really kind of settled, settled us down a little bit at running back position, uh, did a good job. And uh, then Artavis, you know, with the game-winning touchdown, just a, just a great play. Great play by a player uh, when we had to have it uh, most. And uh, defensively, eight tackles for loss, four sacks, two big interceptions. Uh, still negative in the margin, uh, but uh, nice to see Kayvon get, get, get an interception. And then, you know, what can you say uh, about Marcus Edmund? I mean, last two games, biggest biggest play in the biggest games, uh, and he's come up with both of them. Uh, what, I mean, just an incredible play. I can't wait to watch that on tape. I mean, he just went and got it, uh, just just ball hawk. And uh, it was just awesome to see. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, hey, for us, you know, it's 20 in a row at home. Uh, what a what a streak that is. I mean, it's incredible to be a part of something like that. And uh, they just think they're supposed to win. And again, that's that's a mentality that's been ingrained into these guys, no matter what. Uh, but for us, you know, they asked me after the game, what does this mean? I, I said, well, it means we're 7-0. Uh, it means 
We're seven and zero. That's where we want to be. It means we're in control of our destiny and our division, which is the next goal. Just try to win the division, and uh, so we're on track to do that. Whatever, anything that can come after that, we, we got to earn. But uh, we're we're right where we hope to be. But I, I can I can assure you and promise you that there's no one satisfied in that locker room down there. Uh, we take a lot of pride in our performance, and um, uh, we man, it was a fun locker room. It was a lot of fun uh, to see them. You know, you know, cause you got to win games like that. You know, I, I, I told them, I, you know, when we won the national championship my, my senior year at Alabama, and everybody knows we went 13-0 and we killed Miami in the national championship game. But what people don't talk about is uh, we're down, uh, I think it was 7-6, to six, late in the, in, in the game against La Tech. And uh, I'm on the punt return team. Next thing I know, here goes David Palmer, takes a punt to the house, and we win 13-7. to seven. That's how we won the game against La Tech. And I also remember later on in the year, because uh, I think it was the third quarter at La Tech, but we had never been behind in the fourth quarter all year that year. We're at Mississippi State, and uh, we're, we're down, and it ain't looking good, and we're backed up, and we have to punt the ball, and we're going to just hope we can use our timeouts and get the ball back. And we punt the ball away, and uh, old Steve Buskey, old tight end, goes down there, knocks the ball loose, and Willis Bevel comes up with the fumble. Willis Bevel's boys are now, they play for me, Kelly and Kelvin Bevel. They're juniors on our team now. But, and that's how we won the game. You know, that's how we blocked the punt. Uh, and, and Langham takes it in on the blocked punt. We, we, we cause a fumble on the punt coverage, and Bevel comes up with it, gave us the ball back and a chance to go. And we won. You got to win games like that to have a special season. You know, it's just, and so I, I understand that. I told them that. Uh, but I can tell you, these guys, as I said, they take a lot of pride in their performance, and uh, uh, you know we know we got we got to play better. Can't say enough about our offensive coaches. I thought we, I thought they called a great game. I don't, I don't I don't think Jeff and Tony and our offensive coach could have called a better game. Just a tremendous job of putting our guys in position to be successful all day, and our guys uh, uh, know that there's some areas where you know we got to do a better job of of uh, you know not not uh, putting ourselves in a bad a bad situation and putting the ball on the ground. We got We got to clean up the ball security. That's for sure. So that's the biggest issue that I saw offensively, and then uh, defensively, uh, I thought they did a great job against us up front. I thought I thought they did a great job in the run game. I thought they uh, did a nice job uh, getting us off balance on some things. Uh, but I but I thought we did a good job making some competitive plays downfield uh, where they had a chance to hit a couple plays and we made some plays. But, uh, you know, I thought they came in with a good plan and uh, competed really hard. But at the end of the day, uh, we found a way to win. And we talked about this game last year. I thought we won this game uh, up there in spite of special teams because they, we gave up a kick return. We gave up some field position uh, and some other plays in the game. And today, uh, you know, we won the game because of special teams. They didn't get anything in the return game. And that block kick by Christian Wilkins was the difference in the game. Uh, we don't have a chance to go into overtime uh, without that block kick. And uh, so just really proud of, of uh, all, again, how they competed uh, the whole game and overcame some mistakes. But for us, the open date comes at a good time. Uh, we got some guys we got to get healthy. We got to kind of get our legs back under us, get, get, uh, go back and see if we can clean up some of the mistakes that we're making and uh, you know, get ready for a strong finish. So uh, again, proud of our guys. Uh, did a great job on third down uh, offensively and uh, uh, had some big fourth down conversions as well that I thought were critical in the game. I think we we're three out of four on fourth down. Uh, and the last thing I'd say to you guys uh, is, uh, you know, most of y'all know Jamie Skowski and uh, his mm -hmm. father passed away suddenly uh, yesterday. It was just a really, it's been a really heavy heart for our team in the last, you know, 16, 18 hours. Uh, literally, literally yesterday afternoon at two o'clock, we were walking into a team meeting, and um, um, we got a call from his mom, and uh, they found his dad unresponsive. Um, I, I think he was cutting grass or something out in the yard, and, and uh, they rushed him to the hospital. And so I had uh, Jamie in the office, and um, they called and said he did not make it. So it was just a really devastating situation. So uh, we got him home uh, last night, and uh, he's with his family. 
and um, you know, just ask that everybody keep him in his, in his, in his thoughts and prayers. So just, it's a really tough situation. He's a young father, and uh, you know, Jamie's an 18-year-old young guy, and uh, just been here about three months. So very tough situation for that family. So we're just keeping him in our thoughts and prayers, and uh, you know, hopefully, I'm sure he watched the game today, and hopefully, hopefully, at least got a little smile on his face uh, watching his guys play. You preach the turnovers 